Okay. I am going to take a quick second to introduce the final presentation of my FIFA fellow. Note that after uh, Greg is done with his presentation, we will ask you in the audience to complete your ballot. And those of you online who are viewing will receive a ping through a polling function where you also can vote for the presentation from our five FIFA fellows that you think best explains a complex um, problem using systems thinking. So Greg Busby is going to use DSRP to deconstruct three well, three well known IT process models. And he's going to capture and synthesize the best elements of those three to offer a new comprehensive model for systems thinking around IT. So without further delay, Greg Busby, let's give him some love. <laughs> okay. Good morning. My name is Greg Busby. I'm here today to talk with you about aligning mental models in defining the scope of information technology systems. 70% study after study over the last 20 years has shown that approximately 70% of IT projects do not deliver the expected functionality on time and within budget. And when you consider that approximately $250 million billion is spent on IT systems in the United States alone every year, this is a significant economic impact. So why do so many projects fail? Well, there are a number of reasons cited, but other than lack of executive support, most of them come down to results or a lack of results. In fact, let's look at the definition of IT project failure. It does not, it, it does not provide the expected scope within the allotted budget. If we don't get the results that we expect, the project is considered a failure. The real world does not match our mental model. So human beings develop mental models in order to explain the real world, in order, and the real world then gives us feedback on those models in order to perform and reform those, those models. So let's look at a restatement of that quote. IT project failures result from a mismatch between how an IT system works and how we expect it. So what is an expectation? An expectation is simply a mental model of a future state. And like many complex uh, solutions, IT systems have the issue that the reality does not yet exist. We do not have anything against which to test our mental models and to give us feedback. A loop is broken. To ensure project success, it is vital that we understand all of the expectations of stakeholders and that we align their mental models. Systems thinking is what allows us to improve and align our mental models. And in fact, systems thinking as presented by Derek and Laura Cabrera has given us four simple rules that together form evolved into a complex mental model. Those are the SR Distinctions. What is in scope and what is out of scope in the system? 
This is a fundamental distinction. By definition, scope identifies the boundaries of the system itself. System. What are the parts of an IT system and how do they interact and come together to form a coherent whole? All of the parts that are needed to fulfill expectations will be considered in scope. Relationships. How do the parts and the people interact with each other in order to provide the system and the expectations? And finally, perspective. We'll see that perspectives, when added, can greatly improve our understanding of scope and the alignment of our mental models. So within the IT community, a, a discipline called business analysis has emerged in order to bridge gaps between understanding of state. Business an analysts have the primary responsibility for ensuring that the scope of the project is well and to do this, they've developed a number of models. Com three common models are the context diagram, functional decomposition diagram, and the use case model. Each of these presents a view on the ITS. Each of them seeks to identify the appropriate parts. Together, they help us to align the models of stakeholders. The first is the context diagram. The context diagram identifies actors, which can be users or systems, and the ITS, and the data relationships between them. When we scan this for DSRP pattern, we'll see RDS barbells between the actors and the ITS, defined by the data. But a more careful application of DSRP rules allows us to take the data and break that up into systems which contain discrete data elements, giving us a better understanding. Adding the perspective of the ITS itself can help us to validate the set of actors. Both of these improve the model itself and help to improve our understanding of scope. So now we've identified people, we've identified data. Next, we'll look at processes. Use the functional decomposition or decom diagram. The decomp diagram is a process map of the system, and it enumerates the functions that we expect the system to have. Functions that are not identified here are not in scope. Again, scanning for DSRP patterns, we see simple part whole relationships between the subfunctions, the functions themselves, and the system. But again, a deeper application of DSRP allows us to add relationships between functions as they affect one another. It also allows us to add perspectives on the system, which can help our understanding. Again, system thinking improves our model and it helps improve our understanding of scope. So now that we've identified what functions we expect to be in the ITS and what we expect to be out, we can turn to understanding what actors are going to use those functions and under what rules. To do this, we use the use case. A use case is simply a scenario that describes how an actor interacts with the system, how the system responds, what functions they expect it to have. The diagram here shows the relationship between the actors and use cases. It does not capture the rules. Those are captured in text, and those are usually on the diagram. So scanning for DSRP here, we look to see that use cases are a part of the ITS and have relationships. And this is a straightforward map, but I believe this is an incorrect map. I think that use cases are more properly represented as perspectives on the ITS. And those perspectives are shared by multiple stakeholders, multiple actors. This is the correct identification of use cases, and it is really a fundamental change to the model that we use. We can also expand our use cases into systems, showing the steps within them, and capture the rules as part of it. So this is a, a big improvement over the models we typically use, and it leads to a much better understanding of scope. Taken together, these three models do a pretty good job of aligning our future state to our mental model, but they are still 
three separate models and can be inconsistent. What we need is integration. Systems thinking in DSRP gives us the ability to integrate all of these models together into a combined diagram. It contains the context diagram, the decomposition diagram, and the use case diagram that we discussed, but it improves on this model. We also can map use cases granularly to the functions and figure out what data goes between the use case and the function. We also explicitly add the perspective of the business. This is a critical perspective and it was implicit up until now. So systems thinking helps us align our mental models and improve our understanding of scope. So distinction of scope is critical in ensuring project success. We have to align the mental models of stakeholders. Our current systems do a pretty good job of that as we discussed, and they can help align that future state to our mental model. But with the addition of systems thinking and DSRP, we can also align our mental model to not only future state, but to the real world. This will improve the alignment of the mental models of the stakeholders and greatly improve our chances of projects.